Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Crack UPSC CSC English. About me, I am Sandeep Bhushan Thumala and my credentials are I have 10 years of teaching experience for civil services. I teach international relations and internal security and analysis of the Hindu newspaper. And this session or video will be very very helpful for you to crack prelims and means 2020 as well as 2021 because I would be emphasizing on the keywords from the newspaper. I would be emphasizing on the key phrases from the newspaper. Wherein by emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases from the newspaper, we will be able to arrive to factual, what are the factual questions and what are the analytical questions which can be asked by the UPSC from the newspaper that is from the current affairs. So definitely by emphasizing the keywords and the key phrases by me through my lecture which will be very very useful for you to identify the factual and analytical question for prelims 2020 as well as mains 2021. And also while we are emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases this will definitely help you in regards to the answer writing. This will definitely help you in regards to the answer writing. When I am saying it will help you in regards to the answer writing that means your answers for mains would be precise and concise. When I am saying precise and concise, concise that is it is as per the dot that means whatever the UPSC is asking from you, you will be able to write it precise and concise once you start imbibing the keywords and the key phrases in your answers which will be very very useful for the mains so that when you start imbibing the keywords and the key phrases in your answers that is in the mains your answers would be precise as concise and thereby you would definitely score more marks than any other person who is your friend or the the uh, the, the uh, civil servant as friend so definitely it will be useful for you to score more marks to have edge over others in regards to the answer writing so my tagline is keywords and the key phrases which will be very very useful for the prelims as well as mains 2020 and 2021 also and there is a notification in regards to let's crack upsc cs english which is india's largest learning platform and once you get subscribed to the plus you will have unlimited live and recorded courses from india's best educators and the other privileges what you get once you subscribe to an academy is the daily live classes, live tests and quizzes, structured courses and unlimited access to the live and recorded courses and these are the educators which you can see it on your screen at an academy and in regards to let's crack UPSC CS English courses they are economy, history, current affairs and geography and all others which you can also see it on your screen and apart from that you have the courses for governance, internal security, social issues and all others which you can also see it on your screen. And in regards to Let's Crack UPSC CAC English subscription, you have 12 month and 24 month subscription. Where in 12 months it is 40,000, original price 24 months it is 48,000. So it's always recommended to go ahead with subscription for 24 months. That is Let's Crack UPSC CAC English by using my code SBT10. That is Sandeep Bhushan Tumala10. Where you will get 10% discount on the original price. And the discounted price would be 43,000. And here effectively you will be paying that is civil servant aspirants will be paying the amount only for 13 months. You will be paying the amount only for 13 months that is 12 plus 1 month 40,000 plus 8,000. So you are paying the 48,000 which you, you would get the entire 24 month subscription. So do take the advantage of the privilege which has been offered by an academy to all the civil servant aspirants that to go ahead with subscription with the 24 months of 24 months by using my code SBT10 you will get 10% discount and the discounted price would be 43,000 and the, today's topic would be the analysis of the Hindu newspaper so before I get into the analysis of the newspaper I would say very good morning to everyone who are in the uh, live and also in the live chat very good morning to everyone uh, good morning to Heman, Sudarshanan, Rahul, B.S. Uh, Abhay Agarwal, Malvika Sajivan, Sravani, uh, Venkatesh, Manasa, Saket, everyone very good morning. Uh, Abhay says that please koi mero ko ye bata do na ki kal Neeraj Parik sir kal an academy special liya ta kya. Okay, that is not related to me, to my subject or to my, uh, but very good morning to Abhay. 
I think your first time you have joined my uh, my class live. Very good morning to you all. And this session will be very very important as I re-emphasize and I will again reiterate my sentence that my tagline that I will be focusing on the keywords and the key phrases which will be very very useful for the prelims as well as mains for 2020 as well as 2021. So the today's news is that government to boost infrastructure in areas along China border. So definitely as we have experienced that there is a skirmish or there is a face off or the standoff between India and China that is Indian troops and Chinese troops up along the line of actual control along the line of actual control in Ladakh and Sikkim in Ladakh and Sikkim. So we have been uh, li we have been listening to this news and we have seen that the face off between the Indian troops and the Chinese troops and thereby the uh, now the government has come up saying that it will boost the infrastructure it will ramp up the infrastructure and uh, uh, along the china border that is very clearly stated by the ministry of home affairs that the uh, government will go ahead with spending 10 percent of the funds for the ramping of the infrastructure that is 10 percent of the funds of a centrally sponsored scheme that means definitely it wanted to go ahead with uh, road construction or developing various others we will look into various others wherein they will definitely get into the mode of spending 10 percent of the fund that is centrally sponsored scheme so this is very important for prelims point of view the ministry of home affairs has come up with saying that the government of india will go ahead with 10 percent of the uh, funds which will be which are of the centrally sponsored scheme which will be the projects in regards to the ramping of the infrastructure in Ladakh, Arunachal Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand and Sikkim. That means the states and the union territories, states and union territories which are bordering uh, India and China or which are bordering China. The government of India that is the Ministry of Home Affairs has come up saying that it will spend 10%. This is very important. 10% of the centrally sponsored scheme. And then just for information you need to know that which are the states and unit territories which are bordering the which are bordering the india and china that is ladakh uh, the union territory arunachal pradesh in the eastern region himachal pradesh uttarakhand and then sikkim we have seen so these uttarakhand uttarakhand or uttarakhand yeah uttarakhand and then himachal pradesh so these are the states and unit territories wherein the government will go ahead with spending the money and then johan has joined very good morning to johan very good morning to you Hon. and then uh, this program will be taken up by the border area development programs this, this is very very important keyword again for prelims because this is the one which the government is trying to boost not trying government has gone ahead with spending 10 percent of the funds of the centrally sponsored scheme to boost the infrastructure and this program will be taken or it will be taken up by the border area development program do not get confused because in the question they could be asking this and also they would also give roads and development rnb roads and development uh, roads and development building so rnd they would also give the rnd so it is not rnd roads and development but it is by the taken up with the border area development program and it has allotted how much 784 crores of rupees 784 crores of rupees is been allocated uh, for 2021 for 2021 for fiscal year that is this year 2021 to all the states and union territories which are bordering india and uh, china so definitely it is in regards to the ramping up of the infrastructure and this b vadp again for prelims point of view i have take, I've taken this extra information which is very very important for prelims if the question is asked based on the backdrop of the government to boost infrastructure in areas along china and border there would be a question which could be only based on the badp please do understand there would be a question current affairs question which could be based only on badp that is the border area area development program so it has been started in the year 1980 it has been started in the year 1980 and it has started in the while well, when it has started in the year 1980 it has actually gone ahead with going ahead with the infrastructure development in the western border western border of india and china and then in the western border it has expanded it work works to 396 blocks 396 blocks and then 111 border districts please do understand this border districts so almost uh, triple one districts from 16 states and then 
two union territories. Sixteen states and two union territories were taken into consideration, and VADP has started was started in the year 1980. Uh, we need to also look at which five-year plan, which five-year plan it has uh, actually started. This is also very important for prelims point of view. So 1980 it has been actually initiated or it has started and then it has started in the western border, western border of uh, India and China and it has come up with uh, 396 blocks. It has extended over the years, over the years it has expanded to 396 blocks and to triple one border disputes and it has been expanded to 16 states and two union territories. Why I am saying this is, this could be very very important for the prelims point of view, prelims point of view. And then VATP, when I am saying 1980, so it is in the seventh five year plan. Seventh five year plan, it has been initiated in 1980. And this was uh, ensuring what was the main reason to come up with that? It's to make sure that border uh, uh, development that is in regards to infrastructure development by ensuring the balanced development. This is very important keyword. Balanced development is a very important keyword. And then again, this seventh five year plan. Seventh five year plan is important. And then in regards to how or why it wanted to go ahead, it wanted to go ahead with the balanced development of border areas. So it is balanced development of border areas. The BDBA, which a uh, BADP, which is very, very important. It has taken into consideration that uh, it will go ahead with ensuring the border development of border areas or balanced development of border areas. So it is very important this one. And especially focusing on the infrastructure, development of infrastructure and promotion of sense of security. So definitely it is in regards to the infrastructure development and also taking care of the security. So what is that need for the government of India to go ahead with boosting the infrastructure? First is to make sure that it will have a balanced development of border areas. Not only that, it will have an infrastructure development. When it goes ahead with infrastructure development, it will have the security. Please do understand it will have the security because once you have the infrastructure development and then when you have the road construction and all this, there will be very clear that habitation do take place. Habitation in the sense, people will start, what do you say, uh, start living there. I mean, the initial indigenous tribes, indigenous tribes will start uh, expanding their territory or else the new people from one, one tribe to another tribe, there would be a movement, movement of people to people, there would be in, the, in regards to the trade because of the infrastructure development. So that what will happen is habitation will take place. Once habitation is there, definitely the area which is habitated, if, if any kind of situation that is the foreign troops, uh, that is Chinese troops entering to the Indian, uh, Indian uh, territory, so definitely it will be part of security. So these habitated people will definitely pass information to the military or the local military, uh, local army people. So definitely it is a security to India. So boosting the infrastructure, uh, infrastructure is definitely for India's security, India's na or national security. Please do take, take it into consideration. Could be like the reason why it could be asked in the mains that the, the way the Indian government is going at with the boosting of the infrastructure is for the national security. Explain or discuss. The way the Indian government is going ahead with 10% of the centrally sponsored scheme to boost the infrastructure development in the border areas of India and China is for the national security discuss in the mains point of view also. So I have taken into consideration from both mains and prelims point of view also. And then in 2019-20, it was 825 crores which was granted. So if you look at here in this uh, 2020, it is 784 crores. Please do understand the difference between 2020 fiscal year the allotted uh, to border area development program is 785 crores in 2021. This is this fiscal year and last year 2019-20 it was 825 crores. And definitely this will go ahead with developing strategical important villages and towns. So definitely the, the towns, the villages and towns have will be developed and there would be connectivity between the villages and the town. Once there is connectivity between the villages and the town, definitely there would be trade. That is in regards to the people, movement of the people. Movement of the people will take place. Once the movement of the people takes place, there would be trade happening. Once there is a trade, definitely there is a situation that mode of habitation takes place. Mode of habitation takes place. It is none other than virtually there is a security for India at the borders between India and China. So that is the main reason why the government of India is going ahead with the construction or is boosting the or ramping up the infrastructure development. And we have seen this 
this is very very important and it has been identified by the border guarding forces so definitely the border guarding forces have also made it very clear that the uh, boosting of the infrastructure or ramping of the infrastructure is need of the hour from uh, what you say national security or india's national security and uh, this uh, BADP is under the Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India or De Department of Border Management or Border Area Development Program. So Border Area Development Program, they could, when I said there could be a question only on the Border Area Development, so it is part of which among the following ministry, it is the Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India. Again under that department which it is a Ministry of Home Affairs, Ministry is Home Affairs and Department is Border uh, Management. Please do understand, do not get confused. Ministry is Home Affairs. Ministry is Home Affairs, but the department is Ministry is Home Affairs, but the department is Border Management. Border Management is the uh, department. Ministry is under Home Affairs. This is very very important in regards to the prelims point of view. Why I'm saying is, please do not get confused. And UPSC will certainly uh, what do you say make you confused in regards to this. Ministry Home Affairs under Department Border Management. That is. The border area development program is under the Department of Border Management uh, uh, within the Ministry of Home Affairs. Please do understand within the Ministry of Home Affairs. And these constructions uh, will take place or the boosting of the uh, uh, infrastructure take place in roads, bridges, culverts, primary schools, health infrastructure, play fields, irrigation works, mini stadiums, indoor courts for basketball, badminton, table tennis. And this all will be undertaken within 10 kilometers of the border. So this is a strategically uh, trying to develop the uh, connectivity between the villages and the towns so that we will definitely have a security in place. We will definitely have a security in place. So please do understand the, the, the importance of this could be a probable question in the prelims, could be a probable question in the prelims. When I'm saying question in the prelims, definitely there could be a question not on the base of the infrastructure, but there would be question on the there might be a question on the border area development program on the program called as border area development program. So border area development program has been uh, started in 1980 and it was in the 75 year plan and the amount which has been allocated in 2021 is 785 crores rupees and in each, over the years it has uh, covered almost uh, 396 blocks and then 111 border districts expanding or extending uh, 16 states and two union territories. Not only that, it has gone ahead with uh, 825 crores, for, uh, which was last year 2019-20, and this was taken up in the year seventh five-year plan. Seventh five-year plan, and this uh, comes under the Department of Border Border uh, Management, Department under Border Management, but Ministry under Ministry under Home Office. So this is very very important, and this entire entire uh, development will take place uh, undertaken within the 10 kilometers border 10 kilometers border and before i get into the next point srihari and then madhu have joined very good morning to srihari and saket has uh, made a point saying that but china's behavior on borders is completely unpredictable undoubtedly what you said saket is very important and it is right unpredictable but we can when we look at the what you said previous trends the way it has been trying to uh, incur that Chinese troops trying to incur, we can try to get the exact uh, uh, the reasons why they are getting into it. So definitely, they do not want the India to go ahead with the infrastructure development. They are not they are not happy with the India's infrastructure development or road connectivity. But India should not be bothered about it. But we need to go ahead with the uh, boosting the infrastructure development or ramping up the infrastructure. They can get to any lowest level of morality to get their political interests. Fulfill, but because China's threat, we cannot stop. Absolutely, absolutely, Sakit. Development on border areas, along with the development, we need proper strategy. Yes, yes, that is what developing, developing strategically important villages and towns in border areas that have been identified by border guarding forces. So we have, I mean, the government of India or the Ministry of Home Affairs, under the Department of Border Management, has gone ahead with strategically connecting the important villages and towns which have been identified by the border guarding forces so it is a strategic move it is definitely strategic move okay i think you have got the point and very well uh, uh, made the point and next point is that uh, uh, china has made it very clear that uh, we have seen donald trump has he was repeatedly saying that 
he will uh, come and then go ahead with he will try to resolve the issue what is happening between the or the border issue between india and china if he, if needed he said that they, he would also be part of the uh, intervention or he will try to mediate bit but the chinese foreign minister has made it very clear that uh, categorically no need for third party intervention so the third party intervention is not at all accepted by china is not accepted by china and uh, india and china remained engaged definitely both the countries are are in remaining or they are engaging in the both the countries india and china are definitely trying to resolve or trying to resolve the uh, the stand off between india and china and then wanting to come out with a solution by engaging uh, themselves diplomatically and militarily diplomatically and militarily so definitely both the countries are engaged to try to come out with a solution by engaging through the diplomatic this is very important keyword diplomatic and military channels diplomatic and military channels is the keyword here and china's foreign uh, ministry has said bilateral channels so this is what channels what we are talking about is diplomatic and military are nothing but the bilateral channels and these were open to resolve this tension that is what is very clear uh, made by the chinese foreign minister and this comes i mean the chinese foreign ministers are making the statement uh, uh, saying that no need for third party intervention between india and uh, china and they say that both the countries are capable of resolving the issue and this statement comes a day after our prime minister narendra modi has uh, what do you say uh telephoned or called up the uh, us president donald trump or to discuss the border situation to discuss the border situation and there is one more news which talks about border strip more serious than in the past so definitely uh, as satya was saying time and again these people i mean the chinese behavior on to the borders is uncom uh, is completely unpredictable definitely if you look at the uh, senior i mean two senior former generals have made it very clear saying that the way the uh, situation is uh, on to the borders between india and china is more serious than in the past that is especially in the lac between india and china between india and china at the lac it is more serious than the past incidents and this why it is serious is because uh, in the in the uh, past previously the incidents were localized please do understand and uh, satya you will also get saket you will also get very important point here uh, uh, we I mean what is the difference between the previous times and now the chinese troops have got into the mode of incursion that is unlike previous previously the incidents were localized localized that means they were pertaining to one particular or one uh, one post one post in the sense one area one area fine but the current standoff is spreading at least four points this is earlier but now it is four points or four areas so that is why the situation is more serious than in the past in the past it was localized only one area or one particular area was targeted by the chinese troops and they were trying to incur or trying to get into the mode of uh, yes, uh, stalling or installing the tents and then uh, kind of development activities infrastructure development activities from the chinese side onto the uh, lac onto the lac but now it was earlier localized but now it is four points along the lac and that is by involving the more troops than before so that is why it is more serious than in the past now it is more serious than in the past and then the four points what uh, the the uh, face off between india and china is at the galwan valley first one at the uh, pyongyang sel lake and hot springs uh, hot springs uh, or else you can say uh, demchuk area demchuk and then in ladakh and nakula pass in sikkim so these are the areas which are very very uh, important that because of the four points the situation is troop and more situation is very very worst and the more of more number of troops are been stationed now rather than in the past that is why now the situation is very grim very volatile and uh, that that is why the situation is very serious compared to the past and now it is in the galwan uh, area pangsong uh, so lake and uh, hot springs or demchuk and then the lakula pass 
So this, if we look at, we have seen in the past also there was instance in 2013 in De Depsang area and then Chumar in 2014, Doklam in 2017. So we have seen in the past also 2013, 2014 and 2017 also we have seen the standoff between India and China, but they were all localized, but they were uh, all localized, depend uh, only uh, making sure that yeah, Galwan Valley. Yeah, that is what. See, I have taken this picture. Hemant, <laughs> uh, I have taken this picture for you all, for you all itself. Yes. Uh, in the past 2013, in the uh, Depsang and then 2014, Chumar. Uh, Chumar is that you have from Demchuk. Uh, here, here is Demchuk. You have Chumar here. And then this is the area wherein it is the triangle area. Yesterday, we, yesterday I was talking about a, a goat, Pashmina, Pashmina goat which is a local goat which is being disturbed now. So there, there I have spoken about the Chumar place and Doklam in 2013, 2017. So these are all again triggered by what? Road connectivity that is infrastructure development. The main reason is the infrastructure development. And then the other one is that Pyangong Lake face off has occurred in the past. India has been patrolling up to finger. So this is the new one which uh, the face off is happening at the Pyangong So Lake and there are what do you say fingers they are called as fingers eight fingers that are uh, what do you say they are fingers are referred to the mountain spur that is the peak of the mountain so these are fingers peak of the mountain so these fingers are ranging from one to eight and China would uh, uh, they, I mean you have that Chinese troops are uh, onto uh, they are at the uh, Pangsong Lake uh, fingers at the mountains patrolling and also Indian troops are also patrolling. So we will look at those. Uh, I will also show you uh, in regards to how it looks and why the standoff is happening between India and China. So 1 to 8 running from west to east referred to mountain peaks. So this is all that and fingers 4 and 8 are preventing India from patrolling up to finger 8. So definitely there are from 1 to uh, uh, 8 or the, the Chinese are patrolling and then Indians are also patrolling. So thereby it is becoming very tough now for both the or else uh, China, Indian troops to have uh, total control in the Pangsong So Lake. And this Pangsong, Pangyong Lake is uh, between India and China. That is in the Ladakh to the uh, Aksai Chin region. Aksai Chin region. Ladakh and Aksai Chin region or in regards to Tibet also. If you look at closely it gets into the Tibet also it gets into the Tibet autonomous region so this is why there is what you say a standoff between both and this if you look at yes the standoff is the Galwan Valley first one Pangsong Lake you can see it here Demchuk here and Nakula Pass in Sikkim so these are the four areas wherein and these three are in the Ladakh region and this is very very important that you need to keep in mind for the geography map based question for the prelims geography so the four areas which are the standoff between India and China are Galwan Valley, Pyongyang So Lake, Demchuk and Nakula Pass. Nakula Pass is in uh, Sikkim and the three Galwan Valley, Pyongyang So Lake and Demchuk are in Ladakh Union Territory. And this is the one which the fingers we are talking about because many of them have been reading this finger 8, finger 2 in the newspaper, in the newspaper. But what are these fingers? So fingers are the mountain spurs. So this is finger one, finger two, finger three mountain, the top peak, finger four, finger five, finger six, finger seven, finger eight. So this is the eight fingers which are what you say uh, part of the Pyongong So Lake part of the Pangong Se Lake. Again, you have towards uh, east, you have Pyangong Po Lake also. So there is the China, if you look at China, China controls finger 8 and patrols to finger 8 too. So this finger 8 or this area, that is the mountain spur, the mountain peak, China controls the finger 8. Finger 8, that, that is this part of it is controlled by China is controlled by China, but it patrols till two. So this is what it is. From finger eight, it can finger eight the China controls, but patrols to patrolling it does till finger two. 
still here and then if you look at India also goes ahead with from finger 1 to finger 8 and because from what you say 4, 5 or from here 2, 3, 4 these are the areas wherein it is become it has become difficult for India or Indian troops to have that control over the Chinese troops that is they are patrolling from what do you say uh, from 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2 till here so that is what it is and India controls up to finger 4 India controls up to finger 4 till here till here it controls but it patrols till finger 8 so that is what now here the uh, confluence is confluence confluence in the sense wherein both are coming in tandem both that is the Chinese troop and Indian troops are between finger 2 finger 3 finger 4 so 2 3 4 or else this area these mountains of finger 2 finger 3 and finger 4 has become a bone of contention because the finger 1 to 4 India controls China controls finger 8 but patrols from 8 to 2 and when we take this Venn diagram kind of Venn diagram or confluence Venn diagram that is the confluence both together so finger 2 finger 3 finger 4 has become a bone of contention between India and or Indian troops and Chinese troops so this is very very important in regards to the how you can better understand in regards to finger so many of them might have been uh, uh, under a uh, what is this finger is that someone is pointing fingers at India or India is pointing fingers at uh, China no this is finger one is the mountain spur that is a peak so there are eight mountain peaks China controls eight but patrols still two are India controls still four but patrols still eight because of this confluence finger four three and two have become the bone of contention now in the Pyongyang Sea Lake so what is the bone of contention in the Pyongyang Pyongyang uh, so lake is finger 4, finger 3, finger 2 or finger 2, 3, 4 are the bone of contention and Heyman says, uh, okay, Sake says kind of uh, arteries made by glaciers erosion, yes, 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 yes and there is another news which talks about India slams def defacement of rock carving in Gil 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 Gilgit and Baltistan so definitely the area that is the Gilgit and Baltistan in POK which is in POK definitely we know that which is an integral part of India there India slams that is India has reacted strongly to the reports that uh, that the rock carvings the rock carvings have been vandalized and defacement defacement in the sense destruction or damage defacement is destruction or damage has been done to the ancient Buddhist rock carving this is very important in Gilgit and Baltistan and this is very important for the prelims point of view because it could be part of the history and culture history and culture it could be part of history and culture so India has been uh, had reacted strongly for the vandalism and the damage done to the ancient Buddhist rock carving this is very very important I'm saying keyword for the prelims point of view history and culture ancient Buddhist rock carvings were been uh, vandalized or destructed or damaged in Gilkind and Baltistan which is under POK region and then the official spokesperson of uh, external affairs that is Anurag Srivastava has made it very clear that it is a grave concern that the Buddhist symbols have been destroyed and the religious and cultural rights and freedoms are being trampled so again another keyword is the religious and cultural rights and freedom this is the another keyword very very important first keyword is in regards to the ancient buddhist rock carving which will be part of the history and culture and other one i'm saying in regards to is that religious and cultural rights freedom are being trampled so who says this the external affairs minister the ministry's uh, official spokesperson anurag srivastava has made it very clear that it is a trample or it is impunity or it is a freedom or liberty on the indian territories under the illegal occupation of pakistan wherein the vandalism and the destruction or damage has been done to the asian buddhist rock carving which is uh, uh, against the religious and cultural rights freedom please do understand this point which could be again in the mains not only prelims in regards to the history and culture which could which could be in the mains also the recent vandalism or the defacement of the ancient Buddhist rock carving in Gilkit and Balt Baltistan 
is against the religious and cultural rights and freedom. Discuss. Discuss. What is vandalism? Vandalism is destruction. Uh, Hemant, vandalism or socket. Okay, okay, fine, fine. I just, I didn't look at it. Vandalism means it is destruction or damage. Like you, you, you go ahead with ransacking. Ransacking in the sense all uh, your uh, destruction. It is destruction. Or destroying. Destruction or destroying. Aket and uh, Hemant and everyone. Vandalism is you are destructing it. So for prelims and also mains point of view. What is very very important keyword is. I have given two keywords here. That is Buddhist rock carving. Uh, uh, ancient Buddhist rock carving. And rock, rock carving. And the other one is. The religious and cultural rights freedom. Religious and cultural rights freedom. And this says that this is in the area that is Buddhist heritage of the region is found in the rock carving and engraving, especially in the Hunza, Hunza place in Afghan, in uh, what is a POK place. We have seen even in what do you say, uh, Afghanistan, the Taliban's in. Uh, Taliban's in 2000, they have gone at Bamiyan. It's a place called Bamiyan in Afghanistan. Even the Buddhist uh, uh, rock cut, rock cut Buddhi, Buddha, rock cut Buddha has been uh, totally damaged in the year 2000. In the year 2000, place called as Bamiyan, and now the Hansa, the place called as Hansa, the uh, Buddhist heritage of the region is found in the rock carving. And the engravings, especially in the Hunzai region, and which were part of the Buddhist circle covering the Ladakh and Tibet. So definitely we know Ladakh and Tibet is uh, in regards to the ancient Buddhist uh, and the place uh, Buddhist uh, heritage, Buddhist culture, and that is in regards to the. Now we have we have this uh, rock carving and engraving, especially in the Hunza. Again, when I am talking about Hunza place. It is very very important for prelims point of view. So I have given additional information that even in the Bamiyan area, the Taliban rocket Buddha statue uh, was also damaged by Taliban in Afghanistan. Totally damaged in Afghanistan. And this is in the POK place called as Hunza. So this is for the information because it is very important that when it was, I mean the earlier Buddha a rocket was destroyed in Bamiyan, B A M I Y A N, in Afghanistan by Taliban, and now again here in Hunza. And these engravings have been in news. Actually, this is in news recently because the China and Pakistan are going ahead with the construction of a dam that is called as Daimar Basha Hydro Power Project. So this is Daimar Basha Hydro Power Project, Hydro Power Project. So this. Uh, in collaboration with both, both China and Pakistan on the Indus River, on the River Indus. Again, this is very, very important for prelims. That is geography. That is geography. So, the Daimar Basha Hydro Power Project is being taken up by, this is a project. This is a project. Daimar Basha Hydro Power Project. And this is a rock, a rock engraving or rock cut. And the locals have opposed because it endangers the heritage. What heritage are you talking about? It is the Buddhist heritage, which is what you say, uh, the areas which are covering the Daimar Basha hydropower project is, uh, is uh, under the vicinity of Buddhist heritage in the Hunza river or uh, Hunza place on the river Indus. So this is the Daimar Basha river. And this, the Indus river, I mean, it is built on the Indus River. This point at the, what do you say, just at the border of POK or integral part of India and then uh, Pakistan, you have this Daimar Basha Dam. So again, this I have taken up this map based again for in regards to for you all so that it will be very, very useful for geography map based. Geography map based. So the the one which is closely associated is the Nanga Parbat, which is close to the Daimar Basha Dam. This could be part of again which among the following Parbat uh, is or uh, the mountains are very close to the 
Daimar Basha Dam. It is the Nanga Parbat. And the other one is Mohammed uh, Dam site, which is in Pakistan itself. So these are the rock heritage, the Buddhist, the Buddhist heritage. Rock, rock carvings. So this one. So this all this will be damaged once this river or uh, Daimar Basha Dam comes into existence and this entire area will be submerged and it will be what you say great threat to the religious heritage or uh, culture uh, culture and heritage itself and there is one more news which talks about the India Bhutan as in the memorandum of understanding in regards to the environment cooperation so in regards to the environment cooperation India and Bhutan have gone ahead with memorandum of understanding between both the countries and this memorandum of understanding is in regards to the cooperation in the field of environment protection and management of natural resources so it is environment protection and management of natural resources this is a keyword here so what is important is the both the countries have come up with the approval of the memorandum of understanding MOA between India and Bhutan that is in regards to environment protection and management of natural resources management of natural resources and environment protect protecting the environment and managing the natural resources please do understand protecting the environment and managing the national resources and this will have the memorandum of understanding will cover in regards to the air waste chemical management climate change and this will remain in force for 10 years and this is very very important in regards to the prelims uh, the current affairs questions in regards to the uh, India and neighborhood or neighboring countries India and neighboring countries this could be a probable question that both the countries have gone ahead with Avi Prithvi has joined. Very good morning to you, Prithvi. <coughs> and there is one news which uh, the cabinet, union cabinet has nodded or it has approved for the agri marketing reform. So this is very, very important for prelims as well as mains point of view. Please do understand prelims as well as mains. Directly I am saying mains point of view also because there are reforms which have been taken up by the government of India that is the union cabinet has approved the agriculture marketing reforms, agricultural marketing reforms. So this is very very important for prelims as well as mains examinations, agricultural marketing reforms and they have gone ahead with the amendment through the ordinance, amendment through the ordinance to the existing essential commodities act, existing essential commodities act. So the amendment have been done to the 65 year old essential commodities act which was actually in the year 1955. So since 1955 there was no amendment and the amendment has been done. I mean no amendment in the sense in regards to the agri uh, marketing reforms. So in regards to the agri marketing reforms the government of India or the union cabinet has gone ahead with the amendment through an ordinance. Uh, in regards to removing, please do understand, this is very, very important. And by amending the 65-year-old Essential Commodities Act 1955, Essential Commodities Act 1955, they have removed cereals, pulses, oil seeds, edible oil, onions and potatoes from the list of essential commodities. Please do understand, from the list of essential commodities. And this is by the ordinance. And this ordinance uh, will actually has come into force to remove what restrictions on farmers selling their produce outside the market yard. So definitely uh, what was you have this agriculture marketing uh, produce committee, agriculture produce agriculture marketing produce committee. So the farmers were forced to uh, go ahead with selling their produce only in the uh, market committee or in the market committee or in the market yards or in the uh, uh, market mandis in the market mandis so uh, that by this ordinance what will happen is now the ordinance will remove uh, restrictions on the farmers selling their produce outside the notified market yard so definitely they now they have they can facilitate uh, uh, going ahead with selling the product elsewhere not only they have to get the produce to the market committee market committee and sell the produce but they can go ahead with what is a selling the produce anywhere and not only that the second one is in regards to the uh, ordinance will also go ahead with first one is to remove the restriction and second one is to facilitate the contract forming so this is what 
it will facilitate the contract farming so what is contract farming it will allow the farmers to engage in the direct marketing it will allow the farmers to engage in the direct farming so i mean not only in regards to the contract farming but also it will engage in the direct marketing so as i have said that these restrictions are removed they can get into the direct marketing they get they can get into the open market and then sell the produce not only that they will also uh, make sure that there is a contract farming which is being taken up between the uh, traders or the middlemen and then in regards to the uh, farmers so we will look at all that and the amendment to the eca that is the essential commodities act will regulate the production storage and movement and distribution of these food commodities so definitely what is important is the keyword is production storage movement and distribution so these are the four keywords it will deregulate please do understand it will deregulate that means there will not be any kind of what do you say regulation of, of on the farmers in regards to the production in regards to the storage in regards to the movement of the produce and regards to the distribution of their food commodities so by the ordinance there is an amendment to the eca which will deregulate please do understand deregulate not regulate deregulate and by this what what the uh, farmers can go ahead is they can go ahead with uh, selling the produce as per the price what they are actually wanting or what will be the actual price what they have invested in the entire uh harvesting time so definitely it is a benefit it is a benefit to the farmers and the center hopes increase in private foreign investment so at the same time the center is going ahead with the private and foreign investments increase to take place to take place especially in the cold storage especially in the cold storage because as we have seen that four areas that is in regards to the production storage and then in regards to the movement and then in regards to the distribution so in regards to the storage when we are talking about the storage yes the deregulation has been taken up in the storage and but the center is uh, uh, hoping increase in private and foreign investment especially in the cold storage so definitely in the cold storage again when the farmers go ahead with uh, storing their produce in the cold storage again it will be in the hands of the private or foreign investments and this will definitely uh, be uh, the the uh, increase of the private and foreign investment they wanted in the cold storage and not only that in in the modernization of food supply chain so in the cold storage they wanted the government wanted the private and foreign investments to invest in the cold storage and also in the modernization of food supply chain please do understand these are the two keywords which are very very important for you while you are writing for the mains examination so cold storage one and the other one is the private and foreign players wherein the center is expecting them to increase is in the modernization of food supply chain and adequate processing and storage facilities will reduce wastage and so definitely when you have this what do you say storage capacity adequate processing will take place so definitely that will reduce the wastage and it will increase the income so by all this by uh, what is a cold storage and then in regards to the modernization of the food supply chain what will happen or what is the outcome is it will reduce the wastage and it will increase the income of the farmer it will reduce the wastage and it will increase the income of the farmer so this is very very important that how this ordinance will be beneficial for the farmers and it will protect the amendment allows during even during the war or famine or extraordinary price rise and natural calamity so this is very important that when you mention it in the answer you can also put it that that, that this amendment allows regulation during it i mean it 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 is in force even during the war during the famine during the extraordinary price rise or during any kind of natural calamity also so the farm and produce trade and co uh, commerce protection facilities ordinance 2020 so this is the uh, ordinance which would be again very very important for prelims point of view. that is far, uh, farming produce trade and commerce ordinance trade and commerce ordinance 2020 or as trade and commerce promotion facilitation ordinance 2020 so it is farming produce trade and commerce protect promotion and facilitation ordinance 2020 and it is aiming to open up what agricultural marketing it is uh, definitely aiming at the opening up of agricultural marketing outside notified mandi so we have seen that the uh, uh, agricultural mandis or notified mandis you have wherein the farmer has to go and then sell the produce in the agricultural mandis 
or uh, the committee agriculture marketing uh, committee mondays or else in the notified notified that is by the uh, agricultural uh, ministry or agricultural departments wherein it is notified they have to go and sell now it is not that that is all this have been removed all these barriers have been removed and the interstate trade also can take place so the farmers can move from one state to another state where they are actually bordering a bit the, if they are between uh, both the states bordering between the, both the states their produce can be what do you say uh, taken to the uh, the bordering state and then they can go ahead with the trading so definitely they have the uh, in regards to the farming produce trade and commerce promotion of facilities uh, facilitation ordinance 2020 it's open up the marketing agricultural marketing and interstate trade so this again are very important for you in imbibing the uh, keywords in your answer one is in regards to uh, what are the benefits one is one benefit is opening up the agricultural marketing and the other one is the interstate trade no barrier barriers and the uh, while uh, both agriculture and markets are state subject so again here prelims point of view which is very very important the state subject are state subject which falls under state subject is agriculture and markets are the state subject and which are in the concurrent list so look at uh, how we are trying to look at from what do you say even here uh, polity point of view or uh, even in regards to economy which among the following uh, falls under which subject so agriculture and marketing falls under state subject and then in the concurrent list the trade and commerce trade and commerce are part of the part of the concurrent list so this is again very important for prelims point of view so look at it my explanation will be definitely important or useful or it will help you to produce a score more marks in the prelims as well as mains examinations and the farmers empowerment protection agreement on price assurance and farm services ordinance 2020 is also aimed at contract farming so there are two which have been come up one is as i said this is the first one that is farming produce trade and commerce promotion and facilitation ordinance 2020 so this is the first one and the second one is that farmers agreement on price assurance and farm services ordinance 2020 so please make sure that you are uh, getting into the mode of trying to understand the first one and the second one which will be very very useful for the prelims farmers empowerment and protection agreement or farmers agreement on price assurance price assurance please do take into consideration price assurance and farm service ordinances farm services so price assurance and farm services so both are there agreement on price assurance agreement on price assurance agreement on farm services so the ordinance is based on the farmers agreement on price assurance and farm services ordinance 2020 is aimed at what contract farming this is again very important contract farming which could be a very important keyword for the prelims as well as you can mention it in the mains while you are writing about the agriculture agricultural marketing reforms so contract farming is the new concept wherein the government has come up uh, by making sure that a private what is pri contract farming a private buyer contracts to purchase a, a, a crop that means a private buyer is there buyer and farmer buyer and farmer please uh, uh, try to understand the concept here you have the buyer and you have the farmer so the buyer that is the private person goes ahead with contracting to purchase the and uh, purchase a crop from the farmer at a certain price at a certain price at the beginning of the season itself so beginning of the season itself the buyer will get into a contract with the farmer that particular crop of particular area size area will be purchased at the beginning of the season itself by fixing up with a price fixing up a price transforming the risk of market unpredictability from the farmer to the corporate sponsor so here what is the benefit is for the farmer is that if there are any kind of what is a market unpredictability or in, in regards to the floods or else in regards to the drought like situation so definitely the farmer will be at uh, not at the risk but it will be beneficial for the farmer and the risk will be to the corporate sponsor but it will it will be beneficial for the 
farmer and that concept is called as the contract farmer okay i now uh, look at what saket has said this will really open up the reach of farmers so that they can get better price yes absolutely johan says that what is the relation between enam and ewr yes definitely we will look at that is in regards to the non agricultural marketing and then in regards to the other one i will i'll take up i'll take up one session in regards to that one johan i will take up enam and then ewr e n w r i will and then i i feel this was a very important session knowledgeable session in regards to the prince point of view so please make sure that before you log out you like share and then subscribe the let's crack upsc csc english and then go ahead with 24 month subscription using my code sbt10 that is sandeep bhushan tumala wherein you will get 10% discount wherein you will be actually paying for 13 months and if you haven't downloaded the an academy learners app please do download and get the access to the uh an academy special classes wherein you will get all the courses uh, access to all the courses by various educators and they you can also have access to the upsc csc english another channel in 10 minutes uh yeah go ahead saket go ahead saket go ahead and the telegram link is that let's crack upsc csc english you can uh, also uh, have access and then uh, my you can also connect to my uh, telegram link telegram link that is t.me/sandeepbhushansbt t.me/sandeepbhushansbt so this is my telegram link and then you can also any queries you can also whatsapp to my number 9292003111 9292003111 9292003111 so you can whatsapp to my number 9292003111 Nine two nine two double zero. This is my WhatsApp number. Uh, just message me on this if you are having any doubts, any queries. I will definitely what you say respond. And my Telegram link is please do connect to my Telegram link. Uh, T dot M E slash Sandeep Bhushan S B T. And then do subscribe for twenty four months if you haven't still subscribe by using my code S B T one zero. And then thank you very much to everyone. Uh, I would read what uh, Saket has. Uh, if you can take sessions related to kgb inter uh, interference in indian politics and it will be really helpful okay definitely uh, definitely whenever it is part of our uh, news or editorials and articles i will definitely saket i will i will fine and thank you everyone thank you everyone who have been part of the live and also live chat thank you all and all the best for your examinations that is uh, i would say thank to uh, heman sudarshanan rahul abe malvika sajivan shravani and then venkatesh manasa saket madhu srihari siddarthan everyone and avi prithvi has also joined today uh, very good uh, good morning and also manasa has also uh, joined everyone uh, thank you and then see you again at 10:15 am see you again at 10:15 am so i will take up at the 10:15 am analysis of the trending editorials and articles so editorials and articles i will take one and then i will make sure that you all will be benefited by it thank you thank you very much and then uh, see you at 10:15 am